It's Keeping the Spirit with Santa Bob and Matt Durham, owner of Tropical Tire Company. Hi there, everyone. How are you tonight? Thank you, Matt, for coming and visit with us tonight. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. We're here to talk about, you know, keeping the spirit of Santa, but I want to give these, uh, our audience a little bit of background on you. And let's start off with this. I understand you run Tropical Tire. You and your brother, Matt, run it. Yeah, Mark. Me, me and Mark own me it. Me and Mark own yeah. it, and you run it. You've done it. You, your parents had it before you, right? Yeah, they started it in 1964. Same location. We finally got our new building built after Hurricane Charlie. And you know that was one thing that anybody watching, and any of us, you would think building something from the ground up is very exciting and very joyous, but. I Doing it for the city of Orlando, they battled us every step of the way, every building block, every coat of paint. But you know what? That's five years ago. But that's been corrected now. But yeah, the reason we that, are but very the reason happy it was now. corrected is because they needed something from you. Is that right? right? Yes, they did. They needed they, something from you and, and Mark to, mm -hmm. to do something that Dad had to do on the street, and they had to have your variance or waiver to do something. They needed a variance and, to put piping down Pine Street before they even announced the new arena. They needed bigger drainage. So they needed and that that's done. how we were able to put our building up and kind of back them off a little bit. That was great. I'm glad oh, at, least it, uh, at least you're now, and it's great. It's a oh, great yeah. location. It's 25 North Orange, or South Orange Beach. South Orange Blossom South Trail. OBT. Which now, is in the downtown area it's, of it's one block north of Church Street. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's, a, it's a great location. You need to talk it out and tease you guys. But tell us a little bit more. And I understand it also you're into motorcycles. Oh, and you yeah. do you it's, also do DJ work, right? I used to do DJ work back when I was oh early twenties. Yeah. You know, back when you could make some kind of money DJing unless you were a uh, now you have to be a club DJ to make any money. But I was making three, four hundred bucks a week, but it was just kinda like parties, bar mitzvahs, um, weddings. Uh -huh. Christmas parties, you know. So you, you, you have actually been at the joy for a long, long, long time. Right, well, yeah. It's, in your uh, own way. Yeah. And people just don't realize how much they can do this. They just do it their own way. Yeah. Uh, as as uh, my friend Peter Hefty and I were talking on, the, on our recent show, that uh, just do something nice for someone, you know. I, I used to go to work some days and just look to my boss and say, what can I do to make your job better? Mm -hmm. Or make your job easier? Well, that's why, you know, they say if you have a job you love, you'll never work a day of the rest of your life. Right. And even though I sweat hard, I get dirty at work, but there are people in the neighborhood that have been coming in since I was a child and they are now on a fixed income and they can't afford a tire. I'm like, put it on, sit them down the road. Come see me when you need something else. You know, that's right. just, you know, I get back, we've been in that community since 1964, so we'll always get back to our community. That's a great I mean, thing. And, and I'm so happy that Commissioner Regina Hill is doing her thing there, and she is just awesome. She is great for the community there, and I couldn't ask her any any better commissioner. I mean, you said it was Regina Hill. Regina Commissioner Regina Hill. Okay, well let's talk to her. Maybe yeah. we'll get her to come on our show and talk about some of the things she's doing. She might be, and she and might talk to her about yeah. what she's doing here in the city. And, she and, is, and, and what the commission is doing. See what we can. Uh, and, and, she is, and she's just like us. She came from the working class, worked her way up, had downfalls, got up, downfalls, got up. And when she ran for office, I was happier than happier to see someone that came from a working class type us to be into politics. Right. You know, because she won't be corrupted. She will do what needs to be done for the that's for the district. Right now. We need, and, oh, we need that more than ever. Absolutely. You know, this this project on I four that they're having right now, I four is going to be under construction for six years. And that's such a joke. And that's that's a long time. Of, but they also said that the overpass is downtown, that where the parking is underneath there. That entire expansion there will be under construction the entire six years. Yeah. But they're not going to disrupt traffic. I want to see that. Right. That's going to be a great trick. And they're going to have two lanes in the middle for for high volume, or what they say is it's going to be the toll lane. Okay, that's the cool. E toll lane. lane yeah. Okay, the e-pass lane. What happens when you have an accident on that? Exactly. You're done. It's shut down. You're done. Uh, you like know as well as I do. We live in Orlando, Florida. If we're not on the four way, four seventeen, I four, outside of going to and from the grocery store. 
You don't go anywhere if you're not on those things. And sometimes, you know? yeah, if you're on I-4, you go in the parking lot anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I had you a friend know, that was coming down from Jackson, Mike Aloya here. Our producer was here. He's coming down from Jacksonville today, and uh, I was giving him directions on how to get into the Orlando area. And so I said, just come past I-4, just come on down to Highway 50, and just come in that way. When he got up to I-4, guess what? Traffic was Stand snarling already. And then from there into Orlando is another 45 miles. So you're talking 40, 45 miles of stop, absolutely stop and go traffic. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a relief somewhere. But even though they've, worked, they've widened some places that have only four or three lanes. And unless you know the back roads around Orlando, Castleberry, Longwood, Kissimmee. That's where we have to travel in. Walk, uh, well, you did a lot of that too yeah. when you're in your motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Sure. Well, that's, I like the back roads when right. I'm on a motorcycle. Oh, that's good, because it's a lot safer. You don't have to worry about as much yeah. traffic. And only that, when you go to Bike Week, how does how, how that over to Bike Week? I mean, I know you see a lot I of actually, people. yeah, going to Bike Week, I take the back road straight over, you know, I, and I don't even get near I 4. And every year you hear about people dying at Bike Week, and it's usually on I 4 between 44 and 95. Absolutely. You know, and it's, and it's just. I mean, I've ride that because I have a small place in South Daytona, and this time of year I'm over there every weekend, except for this weekend. Hey. <laughs> yeah, this weekend we're here. This weekend I'm here. But you know, so maybe we can do a live podcast out by the pool down on the beach in South Daytona from there. We could possibly we could do, do that. that. We could we could do, do that. that. We, well, we're going to take our we take our show out to on, on location. I take my show out and talk to people out on the street. Uh, so, seen them my show last time. It was. People from around Tampa area, uh, people across the Bush Garden. I talked to several people down there. We talked about how we could keep the spirit alive. Uh, and like my, my thing is, of course, Christmas in July is a good right. thing. But also, I'm thinking now that uh, we have Christmas in July, it'd be a great thing. Not necessarily the present people, mm -hmm. just the spirit itself of, of treating people with kindness. We need to keep that going because the more we treat people with kindness and smiles, the better everybody's going to be. Exactly. People are a lot happier. You know, and it's. Actually, tomorrow I have a poker run that a friend of mine called me about today for uh, to benefit children with cancer, which I don't want to talk about because it's going to make me cry. Because, but uh, I would tell you the details on it. But I, I, he just said, "Do you want to go?" And I said, "Of course, I'll go." You know, it's a motorcycle group. Yeah. So okay. it, no, it's not a group. It's just a, a poker run. You know, we okay. go from five or six different bars. Okay. And each bar we go to, we pull a card. Uh -huh. You know, and at the last bar we go to, or restaurant, you lay out your five cards you have, and whoever has the best hand, hand wins, you know, whatever it is, you know, 50, 100, 500 bucks. And what's nice about these benefit poker runs is usually who wins buys a round for everybody in the place, which mm -hmm. is, you know, 30, 50 bucks, right. and then they donate the money to whoever's doing it. Not you know, it's money. not like they grab the money and say, yeah, let's party. You know, they yeah. donate the money back to where it came That's from. one. Oh, it's awesome. That's, that's, that's great. That's great. And, and at least they're doing something for the community. And I think exactly. it's like, and I like what you do down there, like you said, occasionally put on tire. These people have been there, coming there for years. Help them out. I mean, oh, that, that, I that's it's awesome. It's so, it's so great. Mm -hmm. And the more we do this, I think the more we're going to have our, our, our spirit coming alive. And, and the spirits. And you're absolutely right. It shouldn't be one month of December. Because to tell you the truth, business-wise, I don't like December. That's when our business slows down. Because everybody's getting prepared. And everybody's getting prepared for Christmas. But you know what? I have grandchildren now. So I can't come home going, bah humbug, get the heck out of here. I'm like, hey guys, all right, hey, get, yeah, I hope you're good for Katana. Yeah, so, yeah, I gotta come visit you. And it's actually when I was leaving to come over here, they were like, where are you going? I go, I'm going for a Santa podcast. They all, three, well, two of them wanted to come because one of them's four, <laughs> one of them's seven, <laughs> and the other one's four months. But they were like, okay. can I go? And I was like, no, 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 I'll be back shortly. You, you know? tell them to come <laughs> by and see them one day. Oh. Oh, I'll come by and see them. Unexpectedly, they're not going to think I'm coming or know I'm coming, but I'll stop by. Oh, they will just freak <laughs> out. They <laughs> will I, love it. I was with my friend Peter the other day, and I was a young lady. I guess she was from England, and, and she was in here visiting, and we were up on I Drive, and uh, he looked at her as we entered the, the, the restaurant area, bar area, and this little girl looked up, and her eyes lit up like you would not believe when she seen me. And Peter said, "Yeah, I told her you were coming. She didn't believe me though, Sam. She said, "I told her he'd be here." 
And I wanted to put my arm on her. And I said, didn't you think I was coming, honey? I said, hey, well, you, you got a camera because I want you to get a picture of this. And her face was, I mean, she was glowing. She was so happy that it was just a, but I like doing that. I like doing it with of the children. Did, children right? are great. When you started doing the Santa thing, what was that, five, six years ago? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. You were just happy whether you made money in it or not. You just loved, I saw it in your face. You when go. you told me you're doing it, you just love putting a smile on the children's I face. I did. It's the greatest thing in the world. Skill, I know. I have the greatest job. Believe alone, your thank daughter's you. grown and out of the house. Yeah, she's not out, out of the house. She's in college. Oh, she's she's not out of the house. She's out of the house. She still is at home, but that's okay. okay. She needs to be here. I, so we, I, I remember he showed up at the shop and look at my daughter. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. And then you saw me. She's in college. Yeah. She's in college. I can't believe this. Okay, yeah, listen, we, we're, one minute. We're gonna be wrapping up here in just a minute here. That's fine. Listen, man, I really appreciate you coming by and talking. I'll stay if you want to. We're it's having great. a good time. We'll have we'll have a good time. We'll have, maybe have something to eat here in a little bit. And, that and, and thanks for coming by and talking with us this evening. Uh, at the end of the show, he's coming back. We're just I'm going I'm for a commercial break. Oh my God! Here we go. Santa's got Alzheimer's. We haven't even gotten into the dirty stuff. See, folks, that's what happens when you get along like Santa. He forgets things. All right. Listen, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Have a good time. Be right back. <laughs> oh, oh, this is so much fun out here at the Soggy Bottom Mud Park, Mr. Guy. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I, I used to go four-wheeling in, in Afghanistan with, with my camel, Irma. Oh, oh, it was so much fun. It, it, this is a lot of family fun out here. We have big concerts and events and comedy and stuff for the whole family to do. Whoa, look out. Oh, tell everybody what type of great things you can do at the Mud Pit. Oh, we have all types of things. Uh, we have oh. a, a Jeep rock course. Oh. We have a bounty hole. A bounty hole? We have a hill in the hole. Oh, hill. Oh, there comes a hill. There's a hill. Oh, yes. Oh, we have a two-lane drag strip. Two lanes. We have uh, separate ATV pits. Wow, those are fun! We've got DOT pits, Whoa. street legal trucks. Oh, street legal! Uh, I love going in the four-wheel drive trucks! This is so much fun at the Soggy Bottom Mud Park! Watch out! Whoa. We have, a, we have a big truck pit just for the monster trucks. Oh, really? Not to mention we've got 60 acres of sand off hill roads to ride back to the St. Mary's River. Whoa, if you're so... on four wheelers and you want to get away from everybody and you want to just ride your four wheelers, oh, look out. big trucks aren't allowed to go. Oh, you're a reckless driver. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got my driver's license. Whoa. I think we're smoking under the hood. Is that what that is? Yes. Oh, oh it reminds me of my homeland. Oh. <laughs> anyway. The bombs. Yes. Anyway, also, tell them how to get out here to the park. Oh, yeah, sure. You take uh, I-10 to 121 in McClenny. You take 121 north to the Florida-Georgia line. And right on the Florida Georgia line, just past 185, it's the first property, first road on your right. On the right? On your okay, right. here we go, right? Okay. To the right? Yes. I see a deer over there. Nice. Oh, yes. And, Don't and hit them. How can, they, how can they get a hold of you? Give them the phone number so they can buy tickets to these great events. Yes, you can buy tickets in advance. Only $10. They're $15 at the gate. Whoa. But you can get tickets for $10 in advance. Oh, oh. Call us at the office at 904-786-5503. We're inviting you to yes. the bottom mud pit. Come out to the mud pit. That's oh, oh, oh. Yes. This is so much. I think they're starting to get flames under the hood. You're got I think we're going to blow up. We must it's on fire. We must sing a song before we blow up. Okay. You ready? This is a lullaby. Let's sing together. Oh, oh, oh. Please, please don't sing. Okay. Okay. Keep riding. Just drive. <laughs> Woo-wee! Tropical Tire Company. I can't wait to go. This is the guy right here. His name's Nat. And Nat, he is the guy from Tropical Tire Company. He set me up. He set you up with a tire. He did? Yeah. You're good Four good. times now. Four times, that's right. See, my tailpipe was wagging. My muffler was dragging. You could hear me all over town, but when that tire went flat, I just barely made it into tropical tire. Really? And he was broke, so I had to take his left arm for his collateral. Yeah, but I came back about a week later and I got it back. I gave it back to him. Yeah, yeah, I, I paid you, didn't I? 
Well, yeah. There's a lot of pennies. Right now, there. I want this foot. Give oh, me that foot. Damn. I'm hungry. <laughs> 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 And we're back with Keeping the Spirit. Thank you, Reverend folks. You stay in tune with us. This is my friend Matt here with us, talking with us. And we've been talking a little bit about his family and, and his business. It's Tropical Tire there on South OBT. Uh, they've been in it since 1968, wasn't he saying? 1964. 64. That was the year I was born, man. See, has been getting all kinds of stuff today. He's just confused. <laughs> but anyway, we were talking about the tire story. And we want to talk a little bit more about it. We were talking about what you can do to keep the spirit alive. Uh, the Christmas spirit alive, Matt or Mark, Matt. You got I keep, it right. I keep getting right. That's my time. Mark's keep, my brother's name. I keep thinking Matt and Mark, and I can't. I'll, I'll, I'll get it right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Matt, <laughs> we were talking about you know uh, what we can do to keep the spirit alive. Uh, tell us some of the things that you would do that, to help us out here. Give us some ideas. Well, what you uh, think would help. Anybody that wants a tire swing, come by any time of the year. I will furnish the tire. I will furnish the rope. Come by and just say, hey, I saw you on this podcast. I got you a tire. I got you the rope. Boom, you're set. You're ready to go. All you got to do is take it, throw it in a tree for you, for the kids. That is awesome. And, I think and you know, great, Matt. my grandkids, they, I mean, when we were growing up, a tire swing was kind of mandatory. Oh, yeah. So and that one. as we're getting older, you know, you didn't think of it, but. My grandson, when he was like four, he's like, can I get a tire swing, Papa? And I was like, I guess. And I grabbed a perfect tire, brought it over to him, and hung it up in the swing, and his daddy came out, and we are like, what is he going to, like, you really think he's going to play with this? He, the, both of them, my oldest now is seven, the, the middle one that's four, they're on it daily. Constantly. Daily. That's great. It's a fun and thing it's, to do. And it's, I'm kids. like... How you use your imagination can, with it so much. I mean, they, they don't realize. And how cheap can that be? I'll give it to everybody for free. And even if they only play with it for a year, it's something they're outside doing. I'm telling you, they they're not exercise. in there wanting to play Kids, video games. Yeah, they spend too much time in, in yeah, both. I mean, they need to get outside and exercise more. I mean, what was it when we were growing up? If we were thirsty, we drink water. Exactly. You know, now they drink water, they hydrate. It's like, come on, drink some water and shut up. You know, let's have a good time. They don't know what to do. They used to drink water out of the hose. Of course, exactly. they did a lot of things. It was crazy. Right uh, out of the hose. We used to get out of the creek bank and play in the creek, uh, in the creek bed and swim in water that people look at now and say, I wouldn't get in that. That's nasty. We swim in it every day. We, uh, we, we can't be turned out. We swim right. in ponds that nowadays you'd just be like, no way. Exactly. And but, we were yeah. like, can't wait. Summertime, let's cool off. Get in that thing. Yeah, it's too, hot. it's too hot to worry about what that water looks like. Oh, yeah. on that. I remember one year, we were talking about swing. We brought an old grapevine. We used to swing on grapevines back in the old Of course old we We cut, we cut one down, brought it back, and we were going to fix it up and put it in a tree. We tried everything. We nailed that baby down, we tied it down, and we'd swing on all of a sudden, you know, it dropped. It never did hold. No matter what we did, and of course, I was always a lucky one to got on the, on the one that went out and as it dropped and when it fell, I'm way out here. We're of course. Nice swing on it. But those and, are the fun times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, do you remember that lake across from, it's now LA Fitness on, I want to say Lake Margaret and Conway Road, that lake just kind of yes. south of there. Uh -huh. Did you like ride your bike up there and go down in that little hole and swing out and go swimming in that lake? Because I know I did when I went to Conway Junior High. No, I didn't because I, mean, I didn't. I didn't come down until I was in my mid thirties. Oh well, you know, so, right, well, Ohio. Okay. They did win the national championship, but yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I have, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Buckeye from birth, but uh, actually I was born in a little town called. If it's you, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, we won't have that rattle over here. Right uh, we can do that. Some that's that's fun. We're done to football, but you know, getting back to what he said, I really like that idea of giving away the swings for the for the children. I think that's no, great, time. and, and I, I think we ought to also put out to the uh, nurseries that are out there. The, the, the uh, when I say nurseries, I'm talking about the uh, daycares. Right. Yeah. About. If they want if one, they can call me, and I'll bring it to them. That's what I'm thinking. We yeah. just got out there and pat that world on to them. That if they're interested to have one in their organization. Just give us a call, or a church organization. Anybody wants yeah. one, just give give you a call, 
I mean, I'm not going to bring one to Jacksonville or Tampa. No, but anywhere in the Orlando, in Central, Central Florida area. area. Yes, Central I'll Florida area will be happy to take care of. We'll help them yeah. put it up. We'll make it safe. We'll get and go. And maybe for somebody that's out there, maybe in Jacksonville, maybe Santa will get off his uh, behind and, and do something. And, instead of being on, on break all his time, he do something. <laughs> hey, he's got a truck. Out. I can throw five or six tires in there for him to bring up. I got plenty of rope at the shop. But it'd be, but boom, but boom. Yeah, we can fix you up. But we'll, we'll try to keep it in the Central Florida area. I'm sure we have enough children here that we can take care of. And that'd be just great, you know. And, oh, yeah. You know, I was thinking, too, you know, there's a lot of these restaurants I know that they throw a lot of food away. Mm. Why oh, can't definitely. we do something with this? Why can't we find a way to, instead of just throw this food away, use it to feed the homeless? Well, let me say, so there's, there's got to be a way that it can be done so that it doesn't interfere with the, the business, without, doesn't interfere with the people. The people get the food, it's edible, it's not bad, it's still good, but they have a certain time limit, they have to, be able, they have to talk, right. okay? But they do talk, so it's getting close and someone comes up and is really hungry or really needs something to eat, why can't they give it to them? Uh, a lot they, of them don't. So I'm saying there's got to be a way. That, we, we can, I, we, I'm going to tell you, that. being in the neighborhood I am since the time I was right. a kid, it has been a up and down neighborhood. Right. And the restaurants still want homeless coming to the restaurant, walking in the restaurant saying, Hey, I'm hungry. Can you feed me? I they don't that. want that. Instead of one day a week having a back porch type thing, setting up I saying have a free food. For that. I have a solution for that. And they don't want to come with business. That's fine. We can take that same food, take it to a park, and set up a little stand. Oh, there's a park two blocks from the shop. There you we go. Can do. There you go. You right there. Two blocks there's a way from the shop. And it's an area that could use it. You take that food over there and say, okay, you need some help. Every day between this hour and this hour, we're going to have food. What's here? We have it. And when it's yeah. gone, it's gone. But, you know, but, but be, we're trying to do whatever we can. And to be and, honest, I understand the restaurant's point of view. I do too. I really do that. I understand that. But there's we no can't sense them throwing away. the food away. Absolutely. Why I couldn't mean, we use it? We're a throwaway up, nation. Up. We are a throwaway you nation. You and I, and we got other friends, we can go pick it up and set up a couple tables and say, everybody, we're going to be down here next weekend. Exactly. We're going to have food for everybody. Come and help yourself. Exactly. Yeah. If the restaurant's all on brown, that's fine. I can understand yeah. that. And I agree with that 100%. You don't want to run your business, folks, that's fine. But let's take it someplace else if you want. We can take it to the city park, set up a table, say, look, this is food. We're giving it away to anybody who wants it. If you want to come up, you're hungry, come up and get a sandwich. And you know what? The, the store across the street from me, every Sunday, they don't give it, they don't, they give out some but they have a church service every Sunday where a man and woman, or a couple of men and women, walk around and they preach the Word of God. And I didn't know that till I guess about two months ago, I left something at the shop and I rode my motorcycle up there and rolled in and I was like, wow, he's preaching Exodus over there. Wow, now he's back on Psalms. <laughs> and I was just like, I just came up here for two minutes, and I was like, thank y'all, you know, kind of waved to them, thank you, you know, and, and took off, you know, but they're up there every Sunday across the street, not condemning anybody for anything, and they're saying, come up, you know, talk to me, talk to me, let me talk to you. Maybe we'll go down and talk to them. We can do that. We'll I mean, they, they were them. just we'll really nice people. The yeah. We'll go down there one day and we can talk with them and have them on <laughs> our show and talk to them. We can get the word out. Maybe we can get them some help in doing what they're doing and, and spreading the word. And, well, and, we could always go down there, talk to them, absolutely. talk to a couple restaurants. We can talk to them. And I'm sure the, the convenience store across the street from the shop, right. they're like, sure, set up, get food out. Because there are a couple of, couple of people that show up once every other month and they have food that and they just pull up in their minivan open the back and say hey come on over here you want you're hungry here take this i don't care if you're hungry take some food take some food uh, yeah. you know and it's It'd and i always notice it because it goes from like 15 people hanging out across the street to 100 people running up to get some food I think whether it's free or not they're 
They're, they're hungry. They're hungry. People need to, to help. Yeah. We have people starving in the United States every day, and it's a shame because we're the one of the richest nations in the world. We are the richest nation. We are. The, well, I don't know if we're the richest anymore. We have China. Yeah, and, we are. And, well, China, China and, and Japan got a lot of money. I know this is a family <laughs> thing, but China but, licked my balls. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a lot of money out there that's not here, but, but, but we are the richest nation. But we've got people who are starving. Children go to school without food. When they're not in school, they don't eat. This is nuts. Why should we feed these children? Why can't we do something to help them? Exactly. I think it's a I great mean, idea. It's... I would love to, and I would be happy to take my information, my car, and I would go to a couple uh, to restaurants. If they're willing to donate, I'll go out and I'll set up a thing myself. I'll set up a table and give it away if that's what they want. Yeah. That'd be a great thing. Well, you know what's what we funny is, during spring break, my seven-year-old grandson asked me if he could come work at the shop, and I was like, what am I going to have my seven-year-old grandson do? I was like, all right, come with me. And he just rode around with me. He played video games on one of the computers. When I would pull up with tires, he would get in the back of the truck, roll them out. And I paid him like 200 bucks for like four days, maybe three and a half, four hours worth. Mm -hmm. He calls me the other day and asked me to put this money up for him. And I did. You know, it was 200 bucks cash. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, we, we want to go hunting. We want to go fishing. We want to go camping. Well, use that. You want to use that for what you got. Mm -hmm. He calls me the other day and says, Papa, we're a little low on food right now, so I'm going to loan $50 to Daddy to go get groceries for us. And I was like, wow. My grandson's seven. Great deal. And he figures out what is going on in the home thing. That's, that's awesome. And that's you know what? Right. I don't care if his dad gives it back to him. I'm going to put it back into him because, I mean, that's how I want my grandson, my grandchildren yeah. to be raised as. Is that's great if that we that have something and someone else do doesn't. Now that's the you. spirit of Christmas. That that's is it. the that spirit is of Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that's yeah. a wonderful thing. And yeah. listen. We're going to have to wrap up things here pretty quick here, here in just a couple of seconds, Matt. And I really appreciate you coming by. Anytime. And, listen, and I hope this is not the first time. I hope we come back again. We're going to have yeah, to we can do it again. How can they get a hold of you, Matt? Tropical Tire Company. Tropical Tire at 25 South Orange Blossom Trail. Our phone number is 407-422-4072. If you need anything, our hours are Monday through Friday, 8 to 630. And on Saturday, 8 to 4 p.m., and of course, God's Day on Sunday, we are closed. And that's right here in the beautiful Orlando, Florida. Beautiful city of Orlando, sunny Orlando, Florida. Listen, thank Jeez. you very much. God bless you, man. Right, thank y'all. Hey, how y'all doing? Yeah. This is Justin. Yeah, I was in the trunk of the car. He opened it up, and I told him, hey, Matt, I got your tire right here. <laughs> well, I actually wanted to burn him for firewood because we were kind of poor that weekend. And we yeah. needed to cook some deer meat. Well, he was drinking, and he started singing, pulled another log on a fire. Here he was, but, and I you know, almost hey. got out of there, but, uh, but you, you didn't get any happens. tires. You didn't get you any tires. What, buddy? Come on, now. I'm sorry about that. I gave you a tire. Yeah, you did. I was, you know, Matt, you and me ought to go out drinking. We can do that. We got cocktails out back right now. All right. That sounds good. Well, wait a minute. We're here to plug tires. Oh, yeah, no. oh, oh that's tires. right. Hi, I'm Matt from Tropical Tire in sunny Orlando, Florida. And I'm Justin. I'm just a hunk of wood that went there to get a tire. And I did get one from Matt. And it's a damn good tire. And I didn't throw him on the fire. But we are at 25 South Orange Blossom Trail, downtown Orlando. Our hours are 8 to 6.30 Monday through Friday. And 8 to 4 on Saturday. And, of course, Sunday is God's Day. So we all take that day off. That's right. Don't hit me again, will you? I won't hit you again. You promise? Oh, God! <laughs>